Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today we're gonna talk about saltwater corrosion and marine air layers and how it might affect your project. So if you like this video, don't forget to click that subscribe button. All right, so we're working on a house that's near the water. Uh, it's high bank, so it's like 100 feet down to the water. But if you drew a line straight up and then projected this way, we're less than 200 feet from the shoreline, which means we get a lot of salt, air, marine layers. Uh, we get a lot of fog where we're from. And in that fog, the fog picks up some of that saltiness in the water and in the air, and it can be very corrosive to your hardware. So sometimes you might wanna consider when you're in a marine environment, what should you do? What type of hardware should you use to combat that? So, now these samples I have for you were in a project that were encased, there was no ventilation. So I think this is a combination of different things that made these deteriorate. But I know that one contributing factor is the marine layer that we get that comes in, like today is kind of overcast. It's not sunny yet, it's going to be. The morning it was really uh, kind of wet out and dewy and sometimes that marine layer can infiltrate and it's corrosive to metal. So what we have here are some Z-Max hangers from Strong Tie that were really put in a bad environment for what they were being used for. And you can see that some of these are have a, uh, like a corrosive layer to them and they're starting to rust. All the heads on all, these are all galvanized nails. All these heads have rusted. And you can even see on this one right here, which is a good example, this one has severe surface rust on one side. All the heads are rusted. These are inch and a half Tico nails. I verified that, that are going, they're joist hanger nails that are going into the joist hanger. And the side nails are two and a half inch galvanized nails as well. But you can see that the corrosiveness travels down the galvanized nail almost all the way to penetration. And actually on some of these, it did all the way to penetration. What do you do about that? Well, kind of depends on how long you want this deck to last. Uh, you could start by using a stainless steel joist hanger. Strong Tie makes stainless steel joist hangers and connectors for those stainless steel joist hangers. They're very expensive when you compare them to a standard joist hanger. This joist hanger might be $2 for a 2 by 10 hanger, and a stainless steel hanger, you're probably closer to $10 a piece. So that can add up pretty quickly. If you need 50 joist hangers on your deck, you're at $500. Plus you're probably gonna need another two to $300 worth of stainless steel hardware to connect all that stuff together. I would definitely use that if I was on the water. If my home was right on the water and I was wanting to build something that's gonna last a really long time, I would source all the stainless steel hardware. As a matter of fact, I have a, a few samples of that stainless steel hardware at my shop. So either we'll amend this video or we will do a separate video on stainless steel hardware so that you guys can find it and be able to see what that looks like in comparative to uh, a Z-Max coated hardware. So a few things that you have going against you, obviously we're in pressure treated lumber. Pressure treated lumber has a little more corrosiveness than a standard material, like standard duck fur or hem fur that's non-treated. So that's what the Z-Max coating's for. But in, if you put even a Z-Max coated hanger in the wrong environment, this is gonna happen. So I was kind of curious to see how much of this was surface rust and how much of it actually penetrates into the actual hanger. You can see on the bottom, most of these hangers you can kind of see that they haven't quite gone all the way as far as this white crusty stuff on here. But then there's a couple hangers I tore off the house today that were like this, they tore apart. When I went to tear the joist out, the actual metal ripped. So that to me was a sign of weakness. So I'm kind of curious to see, I just have a flapper disc on a grinder. I'm gonna start by just hitting it right here and see if we can get all this surface rust off of here and what this hanger looks like. And then this really rusty one, we're gonna do this one too, see what we can get out of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put these on and put my uh, dust mask on. All right, here we go. All right, so you can see 
that even though we got all the surface rust off, it's still pitted. The rust is actually starting to per permeate the steel and we actually had to grind off a couple nail heads to get down to get all that surface rust off of there. I don't suggest that you ever do this on your deck that's installed because you're compromising the joist hanger. The only reason we're doing this is for a sample. It's not to, it's not a remedy. To rectify this, you would have to pull these joist hangers off and put brand new ones on. You're not gonna be able to sand it out like this and fix it, so don't do that. This is just for research and development purposes and so that you guys can see what I'm seeing as we do it. I didn't pre-sand a different joist hanger just to see what's up, but you can see that if you get in here and really look at this cow, you can see how it's pitting. So that means it's getting below the surface layer of the metal and starting to permeate it. So given enough time, I think these joist hangers would be corroded pretty badly. I think this deck's at least 15 years old, so it'd have to take probably 30 or 40 years for those to really start to wear out. Okay, so we've done that. Let's go ahead and sand out this. Also, two things. Usually there's a stamp on the bottom of this hanger that you can read. Okay, this one you can still see it. It says LUS210Z. So the Z stands for Z-Max. Some of these hangers, that was not identifiable. There's also a sticker, and this, this is what clued me in on, yeah, I know these are Z-Max. There's a sticker over here that says Z-Max at the top. So these are definitely Z-Max hangers. They're not just regular hangers. They use the right hardware, but I just don't think they gave it enough thought about how to make sure that the air circulates inside of it so it doesn't corrode away. If you took this, this hanger and threw it in salt water, Simpson's done that test. It's on their website. If you want to know how long this will last in saltwater spray or submerged, I'm pretty sure they have all that information on their webpage. So you can go to strongtie.com and check it out. Let's sand this guy out. I anticipate a similar look, but this does seem to have a little more rust on it. So let's see what happens when we sand this one out. Okay, so this one's pitted worse. And there's your proof right there. You can see it's it's... It's really getting in. I can feel it too. Even though I sanded that smooth, I can feel all the, even through my glove, I can feel the imperfections in that joist hanger. Something to definitely consider guys when you're building and you're building in extreme environments, you're building in a salt water environment, consider using a premium product for your uh, metal connections or else they're gonna fade away. I've actually been on a bid for a person that lived over the water. Their house was built on piles over the salt water and anything that wasn't stainless steel was rusting and corroding and failing. So the homeowner's like, yeah, I've had to go under here and, and replace several pieces of hardware with stainless steel. It's the only thing that lasts. So if you got something out of this video today, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. Don't forget to like this video and leave us a comment below and let us know if you've ever had an experience with a similar instance. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.